Okay, a better showing for the okay. shilling at 99 shillings to the dollar, but still a currency under pressure. And so much pressure, basically, that it's created for trade, Kenneth, where we're seeing, for instance, uh, retailers pricing, uh, denominating their, their things in dollars. We're also seeing power bills rising. Just the kind of pressure on the economy. Give us a sense. Um, yeah, that's quite true. Um, um, even for... Um, November next month, we I mean, actually for October, we expect um, the inflation rate uh, rate to continue rising. But um, for the shilling, it was expected, uh, and we still expect it to move further down. In fact, because um, most banks were given uh, the banks were given a week by the central bank to cut their reserves by 50 percent. So um, towards the as we draw closer to the end of that week, they were give that one week mm. period they were given. We should see a lot of um, the sh shilling really strengthen against the dollar. Mm. But uh, generally, the economy is uh, facing pretty hard times. I mean, the governor himself told us that uh, the next six months should be quite hard. Um, inflation, we expect to continue rising. Um, maybe mm. we may see it slow down maybe towards um, the first mm. quarter or towards the end of the first quarter of next year. All right, basically, you know, the banks are in the spotlight because they can drive liquidity in this market. They're also very exposed when it comes to dollar spreads in this coming, in this uh, current market. You talk about them having to change their reserve positions. They've also been instructed to reduce their forex exposure by now as much as 20%. With all the compounded activities of the CBK, um, what does that mean for the money markets effectively going forward? Um, especially with the central bank coming into the market, I mean, at least uh, last week they came in twice to do um, repos uh, at about 17%. We've seen liquidity has really tightened. The interbank has been continually rising. So um, also we're seeing upward pressure on um, the 91-day and the 182-day Treasury bill. Although central bank seems to be um, trying to kicking out uh, bids that are quite excessive, I mean, the 91-day is that it has levels of almost 15% at 14.99%, mm. and this is a three-month paper. So um, what we might actually see is we might, our curve might actually become inverted, which is um, which is not a good sign, especially in uh, um, in uh, an economy facing mm. what ours is. It could be a sign of a recession. Mm. Well, obviously, on the good news side is that agro stocks continue to outperform the market because a weaker shilling basically means uh, greater earnings for them. So is this the time to be moving into that segment of the market? Um, no, not really. Uh, of course, they will, they, they will see the earnings increase because of um, the, the weakening of the shilling. But um, if you look more closely, you'll look fine, for example, tea and uh, coffee the volumes have decreased. So um, I think, and if, especially now with the shilling beginning to weaken, I don't think this is the time to go into agricultural stocks, although we may see them posting some uh, pretty good uh, mm. dividends for their shareholders. Um, but looking at the market, I think, that for example, the way it behaved today, um, most foreign investors maybe are getting a bit of confidence based mm. on um, the shilling strengthening and uh, volatility mm. seems to have uh, not be as high. So we saw a lot mm. of activity, especially on um, uh, blue chip counters like mm. uh, Barclays, which helped uh, mm. push up the index. And other counters as well that also saw some gains. Bambori up 3.33%, housing finance up 3.8%. The two are obviously interrelated because it speaks to mortgage financing, it speaks to uh, the construction sector, it speaks to demand in this particular sector. Is that where the money is going to come in for investors? Um, yeah, of course we've seen, I mean, massive growth in the real estate industry. But uh, going forward, especially with the uh, interest rates where they are, we do expect um, this growth may slow down based on um, a slowdown in commercial lending. And um, that's what really drives the real estate sector. And also the cement industry is um, I mean, I, uh, it's rather overcrowded. I mean, there are so many new entrants. Not only two of them are listed, but uh, there's a lot of competition in the cement mm. industry. And uh, but I mean construction. There's still a lot of projects because projects usually have a two-year lag yeah. from when, um, on average, from when they are for, until you break ground from approval. So they still. I mean, for the next two years, we should still see a boom in the real estate industry before we see right. the effect of the increased um, lending rates. And finally, what do you make of the share price falling at Kenya Airways, down 3.9 percent? Now we know that Friday was uh, shareholders uh, approving whether or not they should go through with the rights issue. We know that for many existing shareholders, this rights issue effectively means shares diluted in the long term. 
but the growth prospects for KQ have been so encouraging given the fleet expansion, new routes, there was just a sense this is where you should be. Um, that's actually quite true. I mean, um, KQ have quite a bold uh, growth strategy. Um, the next uh, two to four years are pretty good, looking pretty good for them. Um, they're expanding in the African and uh, Asian and Arab markets. These markets have the highest return. I mean, if you look at um, aircraft in these markets, they actually have the highest margins in the world. So, um, but um, five, five years, five, five to ten years now, um, that looks a bit sketchy with them starting to look at mar uh, markets such as um, Europe, where uh, the returns are yeah. not as high. But the next five years look pretty good for KQ. Of course, the share price will come down. Um, we right. estimate probably to around, le I mean, around levels of about, um, the rights about 21. Okay. 21 shillings, if you're not wrong.